Hey everyone, it's uh, it's snowing outside. <laughs> we we had uh, expected ice, and uh, it was raining most of the night. Uh, not heavy, but enough rain that uh, it was raining, and not ice, which I was thankful for because that wooden ramp I've got out front and on, on the back of the house, them rascals get pretty slick on that ice. <laughs> it it doesn't. Uh, doesn't melt off unless it's raining, then it'll, it'll melt. I put some ice melt out on it uh, for the mailman the other day, and uh, that works pretty good. But I just looked outside and seen that uh, snow and uh, watched the squirrel out there. Squirrel was out digging through it looking for something to eat. <clears throat> he hides his, uh, I think they hide them acorns somewhere and then I think they'd stumble across them I, unless they got it in their head uh, map it all out <laughs> I, I wondered you know I've watched them uh, carry a walnut from here in the yard and climb up a tree climb over there and follow it over the roof of this house jump into a little uh, uh, a little redbud tree on the back hit the ground climb the fence go over to the neighbor's house and bury it over there. And I'm thinking, why? Because they've got walnut trees over there. Why would he come over here and get one? But, you know, <laughs> they've got something always looking. But I was thinking I seen him out here digging, looking for something to eat, you know, to keep alive, to stay alive. And the thought hit me that, I mean, these thoughts hit me once in a while. I'd, it did, I don't know. It just comes to my mind. Uh, life is sustained through death in everything. You know, in order for a, a cow to eat, she has to kill the grass. She eats the grass off the ground uh, in order for her to live. And then for the cows and the bulls and whatever, for whatever animal lives because of eating, uh, grass, uh, which when you pluck it from the ground, it kills it. It's it's dying, right? Same way with the seed. When you uh, put a seed in the ground, it's it has to die out in order to regerminate. Same with us, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> and Christ, see, that's the neat. I mean, it's a circle. It's it's been, it's been, uh, so anyway, <laughs> there I go. See my head just, I just get to thinking. So then see, Christ was, he was, he was, he was crucified to be made, to be vivified, to be life beyond death. And we are the next, you know, we will be vivified and, and just, you know, beyond death. So right now in this in this <laughs> in this world, these five eons that God's dealing with us, death, life comes through death, doesn't it? <laughs> oh well. Anyway, I've had I've had a lot of coffee and uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, hot chocolate. You know that'd be good. I yeah I like I like hot chocolate. But, hey, I was talking with Rob Weil uh, the other day. And we was going through, uh, talking about Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> uh, here in verse 16, uh, 17 and 18 is where he's talking about, where it says here, it says um, in Ephesians three sixteen that he may be given you in accord with the riches of his glory. To be made staunch with power through his spirit in the man within. <clears throat> and and uh, we was talking about the how the uh, well continue this. Christ to dwell in your hearts through faith that you having been rooted and grounded in love should be strong to grasp together with all the saints. What is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height 
to know the love of Christ as well, which transcends knowledge that you may be completed for the entire complement of God. We was talking about that, the height and the width of God's love, the depth, you know, it, it's all. So, I, you know, I pull, I pull scriptures and, and I will <clears throat> take references from, from one and I'll, that's where I do these, these uh, videos. Uh, I'll take references from one and, and I'll go through it and find things and then I'll put them to, to paper and, and read them back. Uh, so I took that verse at uh, Ephesians 3, 16 um, and from it uh, I come up with, with this stuff today but uh, it's uh, Christ among you the expectation of glory is what I all I want to call this one because <laughs> you know this is this is incredible I, the more I see stuff like this the more I dig into it it just it just opens my mind up to uh, understanding more and more truths so I hope this helps them when I uh, get down in the uh, comments I see some comments on these things and I'm enjoying those I did get a thumbs down I did get a thumbs down bless their heart uh, I can't I can't see how someone could thumbs down this this gospel the the evangel uh, <laughs> I don't see but I did get a thumbs down and uh, bless your heart you know we say bless your heart here here in Missouri yeah, I don't know where it's come from but if you say something bad about somebody and follow it up with bless their heart it seems to make it all better you all know that you know <laughs> you can say <laughs> you can say Boy, that guy right there, you know, he ain't right. Bless his heart. Well, see, it makes it it makes it better. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so so's my rambling, right? Anyway, I've got uh, this writing. This is this is where I come up with all the out of Ephesians three sixteen. That verse is where this come from. This is what I'm reading you today through. Uh, going through that scripture and and using a, a tool that I've stumbled across, uh, I can't think what it's called now. I'll have to. I got that some. I got that in the other room. That that it's a. I got it on a tablet, and it's the knowledge of something. But uh, Dan Sheridan, I think, was the one who told me about that. But anyway. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Hope you all enjoy this because I know I do. Starts out in uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 through 14. Now, we ought to be thanking God always concerning you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, seeing that God prefers you from the beginning for salvation and holiness of spirit and faith and truth, into which he also calls us through our evangel for the procuring of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we also were once foolish, stubborn, deceived, slaves of various desires and gratifications, leading a life in malice and envy, detestable, hating one another. Yet when the kindness and fondness for humanity of our Savior God made his advent, not for works which we do, but according to his mercy, he saves us through the bath of renaissance and renewal of Holy Spirit, which he pours out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified in that one's grace, we may be becoming enjoyers in expectation of the allotment of life eonian. It is that he should be he should also be making known the riches of his glory on vessels of mercy which he makes ready before for glory us that he may be giving you in accord with the riches of his glory to be made staunch with power through his spirit in the man within 
to me, less the least of all saints, was granted this grace to bring the evangel of the untraceable riches of Christ to the nations. And he has protested to me, sufficient for you is my grace, for my power in infirmity is being perfected. With the greatest relish, then, will I rather be glorying in my infirmities that the power of Christ should be tabernacling over me. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yet the Lord stood beside me, and he invigorates me, that through me the heralding may be fully discharged, and all the nations should hear, and I am rescued out of the mouth of the lion. For all am I strong in him who is invigorating me, Christ. But that which is hidden is Jew, and circumcision is of heart, in spirit, not in letter, whose applause is not of men, but of God. For I am grateful with the law of God as to the man within. Wherefore, <clears throat> we are not despondent. But even if our outward man is decaying, nevertheless, that within us is being renewed day by day. <laughs> For the rest, <laughs> brethren, mine, be invigorated in the Lord and in the might of his strength, being endued with all power in accord with the might of his glory for all endurance and patience with joy. <laughs> and in whom we are having the deliverance through his blood, the forgiveness of, of offenses in accord with the riches of his grace. The eyes of your heart having been enlightened for you to perceive what is the expectation of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the enjoyment of his allotment among the saints, that in the oncoming eons he should be displaying the transcendent riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Now may God now, my God shall be filling your every need in accord with his riches and mercy and in glory in Christ Jesus, to whom God wills to make known what are the glorious riches of this secret among the nations, which is Christ among you, the expectation of glory. <laughs> Woo! Man, that'll preach. I'm <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> oh, mm. now ah, our expectation. There, there. I tell you, I have wrote out a lot of scriptures, and uh, I've been doing it for quite a while. And I've done the salvation of all. I went through that. There was over a hundred scriptures, and I went from Genesis to Revelation, and I wrote them all out. But this evangel here, this through Paul's writings, has given me more understanding and more peace about what we are here for, what, where I, what I'm here for, what you all are here for. <laughs> Only through Paul's writings has that been, has my eyes been open to that. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope you all enjoy this as much as I do. I enjoy it. It's, uh, oh, it's awesome. Hey, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, what time is it? Quarter to eight, my time. So I'll put this up. I don't know, it might take a couple hours for it to load. But I'll get it up, and uh, I hope it encourages someone. All right? Hey, y'all go have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you later.